Hey guys, pretty nice day here in the north. I just got back from uh, Helsinki, Finland at the Fur Harvesters auction there. Uh, we went down, me and the production crew filmed the 10th episode of Fur Harvesters NWT. It's all done now, we're done filming, season one's done. Uh, so I interviewed the production crew there and get a little bit of insight into their thoughts about things and uh, asked them some questions. So. Let's uh let's see what these guys got to say. I didn't know I, I didn't know shit about trapping, and I spent seven months with Andrew Stanley on his trap line filming the Fur Harvesters NWT season one. We are now in Helsinki, Finland, selling Andrew's fur. We sold them two days ago. It was a good turnout, good prices, and we are we are actually wrapped season one. It's been a long road. It's been a fucking awesome road. As you can see behind me, we're, in, we're not in the bush anymore, man. So uh, that's about that's all I have to say. That's it. And you know what? Tell, that's a season one wrap. It was it was pretty awesome to work on this production, to be honest. Uh, this is unlike anything. Well, we do a lot of shooting in the north, but uh, hanging out with you all winter and Charlie at your cabin. Um, crammed in there with <laughs> three dudes, uh, sorry, four dudes. Um, it, there was a, it was a lot of hard work. It was cold, but it was it was good. You know, we had a lot of fun. Um, we learned a lot. I think as the crew about trapping and, and harvesting fur, which was pretty unique. You know, a lot of people might be wondering how this show came to, uh, how it all started. Uh, this whole thing began because of uh, Andrew's YouTube, Wild North, and uh, because his mom, Deborah Stanley, bought him a camera four years ago, and he ended up making a uh, hundred videos, which most of you guys have seen, and uh, we watched them and we loved them, and we decided we want to do a show with them, with you, and uh, wow, what a trip, man. Um, you know, Francois Rousseau, who works for the government in the Northwest Territories, found out about you and found out about us doing the show, and I think he really he vetted us to uh, the Fur Harvesters guys. Obviously, this wouldn't have happened uh, without their support and their help, too. So, you know, there's been a lot of people who have been part of this crew. Obviously, your parents have helped, you know. They put up with your shithead behavior for so long, and you turned out to be a real nice dude. You for know, 32 years, yeah. they put up with me. So that helped. <laughs> um, yeah, and here we are. Season one is wrapped. <coughs> just wrapped. We just uh, shot our last shot here five minutes ago, and we're in Helsinki, Finland, and we're gonna go have some Finnish food well, and a couple drinks to celebrate. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean it's cool. This is like a little homegrown uh, TV show. Started with a you know a do-it-yourselfer, Andrew Stanley in the Wild North, and Jay Bulkard, myself, and. Uh, our uh, co-producer there, Max Ludov, <clears throat> who right now is working hard in the hotel editing uh, our episodes. So they'll be ready for television July 1st. And uh, yeah, there's a few other people that helped us out. The real, uh, real Stevenson Burke does our uh, titles and credits, and uh, Joanna uh, Grant does our. Uh, she's our. She's our co-editor. Co and. Um, and Jesse James, Diga Wolf, is responsible for all of the wicked music on the show. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the whole team right there. And, and we've got a sound guy named Travis Mercury that fixes all of our mistakes. A lot of people asking about the music for Fur Harvesters NWT. You know, we got a, uh, a local northerner to do all the music for our show. So you know, that's pretty cool. This is a 100% northern production. Yeah, Diga Wolf is amazing. He's a... Uh, Award-winning, award-winning singer-songwriter. He uh, he writes most of his music in Klicho, his native language. Diga is D-I-G-A, like Diga, <clears throat> and Diga is Klicho for wolf. And uh, most of his uh, music is about you know growing up in the north and living on the land. And his father actually was a trapper too. So when we first approached him about using his music for your show. He just loved the idea, man. He was like, right on, totally supported, 100% into it. So I hope you guys will support Diga Wolf, Jesse James, by buying his music. I think you can probably get it on iTunes. You can. It's on iTunes. Yeah. Yeah, and Forest definitely. Forest Fire is the name of the album that we are, are focusing on in season one. So 
many of his songs will be in all of the episodes. The album is Forest Fire, Deacon Wolf, and it's on iTunes. Yeah, it was a great winter, you know. Uh, I sure learned a lot about filming, editing, uh, what it takes to build a show, all the hard work that uh, gets put into it. You know, these guys didn't know nothing about trapping when they came to. They're pretty green, you know. They never been on a trap line before. I, even before I started the show, I, I, I figured uh, most animals were still trapped in leg hole traps, actually. I mean, I've seen, uh, I've seen big traps hanging on people's walls, but I didn't know how they worked. Now I know how they work. I don't necessarily know how to trap. Uh, I know how to do it in theory, but uh, I probably wouldn't make a very good trapper. All we really knew about the, the act of trapping is what we saw on uh, documentaries and on your YouTube channel. I mean, we know trappers and we've worked and filmed other trappers on, on, uh, on other projects that we worked on. We live and work in the north full time, so we've met people, but we'd never actually seen what it was really like, and we'd never worked on a trap line like we did on yours. Um, so we learned everything. All winter, when the production crew stayed with me, of course they stayed with me here in my cabin. You know, we're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like there's a hotel room anywhere nearby. So, yeah, we were all crammed in my little cabin here for the winter. Four, uh, four men and a dog, you know, it was, uh, well, we got her done anyways. I love your home in the woods. It would be so nice if you didn't live there. And I could just go hang out with Charlie Dog, and fish in your river. You catch your fish. No, I love it, man. Thanks for having us there. I, I, I really enjoy that place. It's kind of a, we go there for work, but it's also real, real nice to kind of kick back in your backyard there. And oh, it's like home, home for us now too, right? I mean, we spent nine, nine weeks, eight, nine weeks. I think we spent at fifty-two uh, days or something. Four, fifty-two four days eight, of production, yeah, nine weeks. So nine. you know, we spent a lot of time out there with you this year. Um, so it's kind of our home away from home and. I'm sure you're happy to have it back to yourself for a bit here. If there's a season two, I guess we'll be back up in your grill pretty soon. But for the summer, it's all yours. <laughs> that was a pretty uh, cold winter, last winter, that's for damn sure. You know, uh, in cold weather like that, uh, things tend to break a lot. <laughs> so this winter was actually one of the worst I had in probably 10 years for equipment breaking. Uh, you know, all kinds of shit just, just went wrong, you know. It's like we must have broke pretty much everything you guys own. You broke your nose just about. I almost broke my nose. We broke skidoos, we broke quads. Generators. We broke generator, we broke pretty much everything that is breakable on the cameras. Um, lost a few things. Must have gone through 20 pairs of headphones. They just, the cables would just snap in the cold. Which is kind of common for northern shoots, but we don't often spend nine weeks a year outside in the cold. Yeah, so I've been watching some of my videos from uh, a couple years ago when I first started making video. Uh, I noticed my recent ones, I did clean up my language a little bit. You know, uh, it came to the point where I would say something in a sentence or expl explain something and the production crew would be like, Andrew, you're going to have to re-say that again. You know, you swore like three times in that one sentence. So I kind of got sick of redoing shit, so uh, I kind of got it in my head not to swear as much, you know, which, which is good, I guess, you know. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a damn good learning experience, I tell you. Yeah, when you're swearing first started, too clean, actually. Like, we ended up, it was actually nice to hear you swear in some of the episodes, and we kept them in, we have to bleep them. But for all of you fans <laughs> of his colorful language, believe me, it's still there in Fur Harvesters NWT. There'll just be bleeps, which actually almost makes it more offensive when you hear someone get bleeped and you're like, whoa, he must have said something real harsh there. <laughs> Anyways guys, we're going to go hit up a local pub here and drink some uh, delicious finished beer. It's good beer, it's kind of weak, but you know, whatever, we're not in Canada, you know, it's not, it's not what we're used to, but we're going to pack our shit up, we're leaving tomorrow, going back to the homeland. Uh, I miss Charlie Dog, you know, he probably misses me, he probably thinks I deserted him. I've never been away from him this long ever, so that's a wrap, brother. That's a fucking wrap. See you later. Uh, we'll see you guys, uh, we'll see you guys some other time. Good work. We are going that away.